Today I'm gonna do a very special vlog. I'm gonna speak English through the whole vlog. And the reason is that I hope this vlog can be understood by、uh, all the people from the world, including both Chinese and other countries people. And the topic of this vlog is about what we have in a classical biological lab. And this. Idea come from one of my friend who is gonna to be an independent PI in the very near future. So congratulations to him at first. And、uh, he said he really want to learn how to establish a lab. Uh, what he should purchase for, and he uh want to look into our lab to see what we already had, so uh he can use them as a reference to buy his own. And for me, it's like. If I take this vlog, firstly I can give him some ideas, and also I know many of my subscribers is the freshman in the university and gonna enter the biological lab very soon in the new future. So I think、um, if I can introduce this machine and related with the experiments you might need to learn, it's a very good、uh, example for you to know what you might meet in the future and what. You might need to get ready to do,、uh, so you can have a brief idea about your career in the following two or three years. If you still think that this vlog is very helpful and you are interested in this topic, please follow me to see what we have in our lab. So generally, the biological lab will include two parts. First part is about molecule experiment, such as the、uh, PCR, qPCR. ELISA, Western blot, and so on. And the other part is about the cell culture. So generally, we will perform that、uh, part in the culture hood. And I would like to introduce the molecular part at first. And the first machine that is critical and necessary is the PCR machine. Okay, so this is the machine, the PCR machine we have in our lab. This machine generally they are used for the、uh, PCR to amplify the DNA and establish the cDNA library. One is very user friendly. I will set several for like do the RT qPCR, and、uh, here is the one for denature the protein or the Western blot, and、uh, just like go randomly into one. You see, this is a very simple three-step、uh, PCR to establish the、uh, cDNA library. And when we go to some more complicated, you can see it, this is a very typical step PCR to amplify the DNA template. We can go to each step to change the condition we want to set. When you want to change the cycle, you can change here. And this is the temperature and the time. Most part of the machine I really like is that they have. Two separate block. So this block have 64、uh, tube. You can run together, and this one you will have 32. They can run at the same time、uh, with different conditions. For example, if you have a primer and you want to try the best alignment temperature,、uh, then you can set two different alignment temperature under different progress. And it, when you run it, you will know. Uh, which one is the better at linear temperature for you to amplify the DNA?、Uh, and here is the bench we generally have. We will have a Voltex machine, so you can Voltex anything here.、Uh, this one can Voltex very、uh, strongly, and you can also change、uh, the strength, which is suitable for your experiment. And you can also change to this one. And this is the touch mode. So when you touch it, it will voltage, but when you leave it, it will stop. And this is a permanent one. So whatever you touch it, it will keep voltaging. Here is a very、uh, small centrifuge machine. So、uh, after you voltage your things, your liquid will split on the cap. You may want to bring them down to the bottom, and then you will use the spin down machine. When you put、uh, two tubes in the same weight. And put in the opposite side, and cap the machine, and then they will centrifuge automatically. And after that, you will see the liquid just flow to the bottom. If you have some small QPCR tubes, and then you can change this into this one, and then you can fit your、uh, QPCR tube. And you can put here, and then also、uh, centrifuge them. Here are two different machines to weight、uh, the molecules, and the, 
this one is a rough one that can put many a uh, big tube and also the container on it and the weight and this one is a very precise one okay so when we uh, turn on it we need to wait yeah and you can see uh, they're very precise and you can use your hand to uh, control the open and off and uh, when you put something in it and then you just yeah you just close it and wait the weight to be stable and after stable it you can read the weight so it's a very accurate one because it won't be affected by the environment at least they will decrease the effect as much as possible and then you use your hand to control the open and the close of the machine yeah okay And here is another one. We use them to uh, heat like the eyebrows job and also uh, to prepare the BSA for the Western blot. And they have two functions. Uh, one is about the heating uh, function and the other one is about the stir function. So this one is like when you put a beads onto it and they can stir and mix the liquid and the powder very well and this one is like a heating function and you can adjust the temperature to different levels and then they can heat uh, the water or the liquid to a very high temperature so the powder can be melted in the uh, water very well and here is our nano drop so we use this one to see the quality and also the concentration of the DNA and the RNA and here is the microwave this one is to uh, melt the aggregate gel and uh, this one is the centrifuge we generally use for the molecular uh, experiment uh, because this one that they can go very high speed and the one I really like is that we can adjust the temperature so that can go to any temperature you like generally between uh, 0 and 37 is already enough uh, to centrifuge them at a very high speed and a long time and also the appropriate temperature here is the very uh, small autoclave machine for us to autoclave uh, the LB brass, the aga, and also like some very um, small sterile water that we might need to use for the cell culture and the bench work. Another uh, metal bath that sometimes you need to denature your protein here or for some specific extraction experiment you need to uh, set the temperature at a specific degree and you can change your temperature here and the metal will be uh, adjusted to that temperature and then you can incubate your samples here oh some people forget to wash the plate so we will make the DNA gel here and then run the gel here is another uh, room that for us to take two uh, qpcr machine this one is for the 96 well qpcr and this one is for uh, the 384 qpcr and i really like this machine because it is very small so it will not uh, take too much space to be honest this one i don't really like it because the 96 well okay you can run your uh, experiment as well if you run like a lot of samples then you need to wait for uh, every two hours to change a new plan if you want to run like 300 samples you need to spend the whole day to be there and always change the plate but for the 384 one you can just spend like two hours and here put your plate here and just make sure that the A1 is point to left uh, top angle so then when you edit your plate you will not revert the whole plate and then you can close the lid and just run your machine and then it will begin your uh, set it program this one is very interesting. I think maybe not many uh, labs have this one. So this one is a reader that you can read your uh, plate uh, on the machine, for example. So 
generally we will use this to uh, do two experiments. One is breath for ACA or the BCAA ACA that calculate the protein concentration and the other one is for uh, the ELISA experiment to calculate the steroid and the hormone uh, consecrated by the cell. After you finish the benchmark part and it's already like uh, your protein has reacted with the antibody and you will see different colors and then you play them into the play reader and make sure that you have the appropriate filter and then you come to this program right click and it will begin to run can you hear uh, the sound? it's like the machine already begin to run it needs some time to... yeah and after like several seconds it begin to read light absorbance of the liquid and if your concentration or uh, the steroid hormone have different uh, amount then you will see different color here and also they will give you a number that corresponding to the concentration you have in that well and here is three uh, fridge with different uh, store condition fridge that can generally store uh, the condition minus 20 centigrade and this one is a deep freezer that can store uh, the samples at minus 80 and uh, this one is a general fridge that can uh, store the uh, things at 4 degrees if we want to incubate transfer system at 4 degree temperature we will put them into the uh, freezer so they can keep or transfer in a very low temperature and uh, here also if we want to incubate primary antibody at the 4 degree we will uh, incubate our uh, membrane with the primary antibody in a uh, uh, black box and put them into the 4 degree fridge after we finish all the gel work we will go to this machine uh, photograph system so when you put your gel or membrane here that can be viewed uh, under different wavelengths for example this is a very typical western blot and you think it's very nice and then after you uh, detect the signal you just crawl The part you really like okay and then you crop it it will be magnificated and in the size you like and then you can change contrast and to see anything you know you think you want to see and then you just click print and then this machine will give you a perfect image see here and it will show the date and also the expose the time and then you just uh, paste this one onto your notebook and you have a perfect note for your today's experiment we need to go to the cell culture room and uh, before that I want to introduce another container uh, for the liquid nitrogen and we froze all the cell here and this cell is still alive like we know that some people will uh, freeze their sperm and eggs in the liquid nitrogen and when they want to have a baby they will take that out and then uh, fertilize them and make an embryo and this is the container that we can freeze any cell we like including the egg and the sperm and here is the culture room we do the cell culture so of course we will have uh, the incubator for uh, cells. Now we have like three different culture conditions under different temperature and the carbon oxide condition. And uh, this is the one I want to introduce is the microscope. Okay, so for example, we uh, want to observe the cell and then we will go into this program and then we can observe our cell under the microscope so the, for the traditional microscope they have a connection things here and then you can open that cap and connect your camera here and use that camera to take picture for the cells but now they connect the machine to uh, the pad yeah this is iPad Pro and then you can just take picture here and enlarge the one to the size you like and also change the focus and you can also change like the magnification here by changing the lens change the contrast um, 
brightness and you can also choose with color or colorless mode and after that you can take a picture and then you will see your cell see it's a very nice picture and then you can also add calibration bar here and then it's a very nice record of the image that you can connect uh, the USB to the machine and uh, transfer this data to the USB and then transfer to your computer. So you can record your cell every day and uh, have a nice uh, observation about the morphological change of the cell along the whole experiment. So this microscope can also observe the fluorescent signal. When you turn off the light, you can just observe your cell image here. Here is a real signal from the microscope and you can change the color of the signal into like red. They will also take the face contrast the image of the cell at the same time and then overlap in the machine and then you will see which part of the cell has been transfected with the uh, virus or plasmid successfully and then you can pick up the positive colony and uh, subculture it. And except for uh, like the M-Cherry, we can also observe the GFP signal because they have like two, uh, two filters that for different wavelengths. And for stem cell culture, we have another very specific one is this microscope. So this microscope can only see the face contrast image. But the nice thing is that we can put them into the hood. So when we want to like pick some colony, in the culture plate then we can open the cap and use the tip into the well to pick up the positive colony. Uh, it's very uh, useful for the stem cell culture because we always need to remove the differentiated colony and just to keep the real stem cell and pass them to the next passage. So this microscope just helps us to do all our work under a sterile environment. Oh, so this is most of the machines we frequently used in our lab and I know there are several machines that we haven't introduced yet uh, for example the confocal and the flow cytometry machine but I think most of the university will put them into the core facility because they are very expensive and they can hire uh, the professional technician to run those machines for each lab so if you are interested in those machines uh, you can consult your uh, university core facility to see which machine you might be able to use. If you have any recommendation or the experience you want to share with me, uh, it's warmly welcome for you to message me or uh, leave uh, your idea under the video. Thank you for watching. See you at next vlog. Bye!